Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at Newton's law of universal gravitation. So let's get started. Now you'll see that this is revision because you should have done this in the higher physics course. And it says that as seen at higher level, Sir Isaac Newton found that every object in the universe with a mass attracts every other object with a mass. This is known as Newton's law of universal gravitation. And we represent the gravitational force of attraction between any two objects with this equation here. F equals G times M1 M2 over R squared, where F is the gravitational force of attraction measured in Newtons, G is a universal constant of gravitation measured in meters cubed per kilogram per second squared, and that is on the data sheet in your exam. M1 is the mass of object 1 measured in kilograms, M2 is the mass of object 2 measured in kilograms, and R is the distance between the centres of masses measured in metres. So the universal constant of gravitation takes a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. And as I said, you don't need to remember that number, that is on the data sheet. This law is an inverse square law shown by the 1 over r squared value there, which means that the gravitational force of attraction between two objects varies inversely with the square of the distance between them. Or in other words, as the distance between two objects doubles, the force of attraction between them quarters. Just to show you a quick animation of this to help you visualize it. So here we've got two masses, M1 and M2, each of mass 200 kilograms. And you'll see that each mass exerts a force on each other due to Newton's law of universal gravitation. So the force in mass M1 by mass M2 is 6.67 times 10 to the minus seven Newtons. And we have the same value of the force for the force on mass M2 by mass M1. So this is like our Newton pair of forces here, Newton's third law, where we've got equal but opposite forces. You'll notice that the distance between the centers of the two masses right now is two meters, but if I was to double that distance, then we should see that the force value quarters because of the inverse square law. So if we double the distance from two to four meters there, you'll notice that we are now at a quarter of the value of force that we just had, and you can check that as the case. So we've now got force values of 1.67 times 10 to the minus seven Newtons. And the same should happen again if we were to double our distance from four to eight meters this time, we should have our value quartering again from what it was just at. It should also be pointed out that the larger the mass, the larger the forces. So if I was to increase the masses there, you'll notice that our force value has increased. And that's because the gravitational force of attraction is directly proportional to the mass of each object. Going back to the notes now, you'll see that in the equation. So we've got F is directly proportional to M1 and M2 because that's on the numerator of the equation. And we've got F is proportional to one over R squared, which is our inverse square law. Lastly for this part, it says that gravitation is a mutual force between two objects. This means that object one will exert a force on object two that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force exerted by object two and object one. So we've just seen that. So you have your force F1 acting onto mass M2 and your force F2 acting onto mass M1. And notice that R is the distance from the center of mass of one object to the center of mass of the other. So it's important that you're dealing with the center of masses when you're doing questions. Newton's law of universal gravitation can be used in estimating the mass of the Earth. So it says here that knowing a value for the gravitational constant G allows us to estimate the mass of the Earth. Consider the Earth of mass Me and an object of mass M on its surface. The gravitational force of attraction can be represented by two equations. So we've got F equals mg, which is just another form for F equals ma or W equals mg, where g is our gravitational field strength or acceleration due to gravity. And F equals gme times m over re squared, where re is the separation of the two masses, i.e. the radius of the Earth. And if we equate the two equations, then we get mg is equal to gme times m over re squared. And you'll notice we've now got a small m on each side, so we can cancel those out. And so cancelling the m's from both sides and rearranging for the mass me, gives me is equal to g times re squared over big G. And if you then substitute in the values for the gravitational field strength on the Earth, the radius of the Earth, and our universal constant of gravitation, we get 9.8 times 6.40 times 10 to the 6 all squared, divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So just to point out, you get this value of the radius of the Earth and the universal constant of gravitation on the data sheet in the exam, and you would also get this value for the mass of the Earth as well. But we've shown that we can estimate it using Newton's law of universal gravitation. 
Lastly, another thing we can do with Newton's law of universal gravitation is to look at the variation of gravitational field strength g with height above the Earth. So it says here that using the same two equations as above, we can determine an expression for g in terms of the height above the Earth. So f equals mg and f equals gme times m over re squared, just like before, where re is the separation of the two masses, i.e. the radius of the Earth. So equating the two equations and cancelling the m on each side gives small g equals big g times me over re squared. And notice this time we've not rearranged. And all we're interested in here is the gravitational field strength small g and the radius of the Earth squared, the distance squared. So if we ignore the constant g and me for now, we can write down this inversely proportional relationship here, which says that gravitational field strength is directly proportional to 1 over the radius squared or the distance squared. And so this is our inverse square law. So this means that the gravitational field strength at a point above the Earth's surface varies inversely with the square of the distance from the surface. That is, as height above the Earth's surface doubles, the gravitational field strength quarters. Or in simpler terms, as the height above the Earth's surface increases, the gravitational field strength decreases. And we can show this using an animation. So if you ignore all of this text on the left and just look at this graph on the top right, then you'll notice that we have a graph of gravitational field strength g in newtons per kilogram plotted against relative distance from the centre of the Earth, with the symbol Re. And right now, on the surface of the Earth, we've got a mass of 1 kilogram, which will have a weight of 9.8 newtons, where the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. But if we now move our 1 kilogram mass away from the surface of the Earth, i.e. increasing the height above the surface of the Earth, you'll notice what happens to the graph there, the shape of the curve that we get. So this is a graph showing an inverse relationship, where we see that as the distance of the mass from the surface of the Earth increases, the gravitational field strength decreases. And we know that's going to be an inverse square relationship. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.